Mm -hmm. Wow. This this next award is 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 is, is deep. Because I think that it is incumbent upon us to recognize that not everybody um, walks the same footsteps, but they can get to the same destination. Mm -hmm. And what is amazing about this next man is the way that he decided, that he decided that he would honor his family legacy while building his own. When he decided that the best way for him to honor his father was to not follow exactly what he was doing, but to honor the work ethic that he had learned from his father. You see, this man was, was raised in Auburn, actually. And his father was one of the most significant black businesses at one time in Auburn and Cuba County. And this young man grew up recognizing that the only thing that put food on the table was a hard day's work an honest, hard day's work. Also because of his religion, he was also constantly giving back. Proving that giving back. Going door to door, ministering when it felt good to him and even when it embarrassed him. Watching how he made that break in the most respectful of ways to be able to say to his father, I love you, but I can't follow you right now. And if I can't follow you right now, I won't take your money. I won't do that. I will honor everything that you gave me. And I will try and build my best equivalent version. He started as just a one man show. And then he would befriend somebody and he would make them an equal within his company. He did not make them a follower in this company. He would immediately empower them to make decisions. And then he would get another person and he would empower them immediately to make decisions equal to his own. And after he made his first thousand dollars and his first 5,000 and 25,000 and 100,000, then million, then two million, then 20 million, as he started to do this and make his ascension, he never called himself the CEO. He always kept on saying, I'm the managing director. Everybody that works with me is a director. And I'm always going to empower them to be as fulfilled in their ability to do their job as I would like to be in mine. He often has said that his father taught him well, not just because the lessons were perfect, but sometimes they were imperfect. And he, he was able to say, this I respect, but I don't want to do that. He has become one of the most successful people this engineer has ever born. And he has never for a moment forgotten that. He sits on the leadership team of the Boys and Girls Club of Syracuse. And the amount of giving he has given in that community and thus past that, is pretty extraordinary. He's one of the most quiet men I've ever met who's so very loud with his work. Mm. Very loud with his work. And what I love is whenever there's a groundbreaking, I normally see somebody on his team in the picture. It's rare that he's in the picture. He goes, oh, well, you, you go stand over there. You go stand over there. And if you look at the corner of the picture, that's where you'll normally see Eli. Leadership personified. But for black men, it is an example that is absolutely necessary in this day and age. To be able to see the way that he works, to be able to see the way that he sees all, and the way that he delivers for every person he comes across, black, white, or indifferent. He truly walks in the footsteps of Harriet Tubman. 2019 Harriet Tubman National Freedom Award winner. Welcome home, Eli Smith. Say a few words. Um, first of all, I'll say thank you to 
be nominating committee for thinking of myself and, and my team and this award. I don't feel, you know, I don't feel like I'm worthy enough to have it. Yeah, it's all right. You know, so, uh, thank you. When I think about what she stood for and, and um, all the people that she brought up from Georgia, Florida, North Carolina, and who need to help, they weren't all, we realized all those people weren't willing to come, right? Mm -hmm. There were some knuckleheads, right? Mm -hmm. There were some people who were was like, here, I'm not sure we should go, mm -hmm. right? I don't want to die. Can you promise me that nothing bad would happen to me or my kids or my, my family or my cousins or anybody else, or my mm -hmm. friends? So above all things, besides being a servant leader, which Sean talked about, she had to be a coach. Right? She had to be a, a loving mother at times to the ones that even wasn't even her children. Right? And that's what we all have to be, right? And I don't know here to tell me that every single day, right? So I try to lead every single day, whether it's in my company or whether it's giving back in the community in which I serve, I try to do those same things. Um, one of the things when I speak, I graduated here at Auburn High School and uh, didn't go to college. But I always look back at Auburn, because this is where Auburn adopted. I was born in New York. Mm -hmm. I came here when I was five years old. My parents brought me here. And I was just like, I didn't like it at first, right? Because there wasn't a lot of, I didn't see a lot of us, right? <laughs> a lot of us in my community, right? And it took me a long time. When I graduated at 18, I ran. I ran. And my dad used to say, boy, you better get your stuff together. Right? Because I failed him so many times. And it took about 20 years, well, I won't say 20, it took about 15 years for me to figure out what my car was, right? what I needed to do, what I needed to get back to the community. And um, when I speak at SU or, or go to Babs or different universities, and I speak about how we can help each other. One of the things I talk about all the time is the legacy. And, and, and making sure that we empower the black and brown people, right? And those who aren't privileged enough to um, have the things that others had. Right? Um, building that legacy is it, it, it's, it's such a widespread when we talk about the legacy that we want to leave. Um, so one of the things that we do within my company is I'm sure we all heard of the pipeline, the school, the pipeline to the prison, mm -hmm. right? I have over 45 employees. 30 of those employees are, are ex felons right? They're one of your cousins, brothers, friends, and they are the most hardest working people that I have ever seen. Mm -hmm. Three years ago, Governor Cuomo gave me the New York State Minority Business of the Year. Yes. Now, yes. <laughs> Team, right? The team did that, right? So, when I ha what we do to make sure we hire the right people, one of the things we do is we do community, we call it community hiring, right? Community hiring is when not one person, but three people have to interview this one person, bring him on the team, to make sure he fits into our culture, mm -hmm. to make sure that he doesn't think he's above everybody else, right? Mm -hmm. So, when we bring that person out, he's already part of the family, he's already part of that community. And we already know what that person is going to bring to the table. That's why we don't have a high turnover. So the other last part I want to bring up is about bringing is about us and generational wealth. How do how do we help each other to get to that level? Right? Generational wealth, black people, we have not had it. Right? We're just now starting to get it. There's not too many second and third generation companies that are black or common, right? Generational wealth, how do we help the young people who sit in the front row to know what, what they should be doing with their money? 
one of the things that we can do is uh, make sure that we spend our money with those that look like us. Right? Amen. So, for instance, I used to deal with a company that used to do our paychecks. I'm not going to say the name of the company, but when I went to their office, <coughs> they had 500 white males <coughs> that were in their office. No diversity. Zero diversity. And I was already with this company for a year, and they had the best rates. Um, and I remember going to them, and I said to the, to, to the gentleman, I said, I'm leaving your company today. He said, why? I said, I don't see anybody in this company that looks like me. So I choose to spend my money where they represent what America is. Right? Mm -hmm. So if we can teach our young people, right, the value of the doubt and the power of the doubt, we will all be stronger. And that's really what Harriet Tubman is all about. Right? That legacy. So once again, I want to thank all of you for thinking of me. Thank you, Sean. And uh, I just hope that I can continue to honor Mrs. Tubman and everybody can be home. Don't understand. Sometimes people are locked up. You gotta find a way. You got people that are. Locking folks up in basements, locking them up in their minds, locking them up in their homes, and leaving them with no time. But